This is ITP 115 programming in Python and I'm going to introduce variables. A variable is like a bucket that stores something or a box or a mailbox like the picture here. It takes a little bit of your computer's hardware memory uh, to hold such things um, and the contents can vary, hence the name variables. Every piece of information that you want your program to work with when you're doing a program, when it's uh, solving a problem, has to be in a variable. That's the way that programs hold on to, label and access information. The syntax to make a variable looks like this. You have the variable on the left, then an equal sign, and then some expression. So for example, age equals 12. This is called an assignment. I know it uses an equal sign, but think assignment. The thing on the right, that's the 12, gets moved to the left and stored in the bucket, the variable, on the left. That's age. It's go this goes right to left. Now, when you have math class, you're used to variables for math, but they always have numbers in them. Um, However, computers can manipulate all sorts of things, and so we have different kinds of variables that hold different kinds of values. First one here is int for integers, um, and those are whole numbers, positive and negative. Then we have real numbers, those are called float. Um, so 3.14 is a float. Anything with a decimal point, that's a float. Now in math class, when somebody says, okay, here's a variable X, it's a number, you don't have to say what kind of a number it is. In computers, in programming Python, you do. And later, when somebody asks you to make a program and, and put a number in it, you need to think about what kind of a number it is. If it's the number of people that come to a party, that's an integer. If it's your height, that's a float. Any continuous quantity is probably a float, so watch for that. We also need variables to hold strings, uh, words like hi, a, um, and even 44, it's a string in this case because we're talking about the numerals four and four next to each other. Um, and so for example, your word processor is full of string variables because that's the data that a word processor manipulates. And finally here we have a uh, bool, short for Boolean variables, that hold the value true and false. You really probably have not seen these in math class as variables, but uh, we need them in the program. Now, in order to make a variable, you just say the variable name, then the equal sign, and then the value that you want to put in it. So here we have age equals 12, must be an integer. Name equals Rob with quotes around it, that's a string. Tax equals 0 0.0825, that's a float. And the last one, is it raining equals false, that's a bool. We don't need to say anything about the names ahead of time. We don't need to make the age box ahead of time because the syntax tells Python, well, that's what it has to be, a, a, a type of thing that can hold the number 12, mm, that's an integer, okay, there it is. Now the names themselves, we make up, um, and you can use letters and numbers, but you can't start with a number. So it's um, a letter or, or an underscore, and then letters, numbers, and underscores, no spaces. Um, and the names are case sensitive. So upper and lower case matters. Um, and so you have to watch for that. Although usually you do not have two variables that have the same letters only differing by case. Um, that, that would be just hard to talk about. You should try to use descriptive names. So in math, we're used to single letter variables, X, Y, Z, but we're allowed to make longer names here and they help you understand what your program does. So if we're keeping score in um, a program, let's call the variable score. Don't just call it S. And finally, 
you'll notice the, well, this camel case thing here that has the bumps in the middle. Um, when you make a variable name out of several words, you capitalize all but the first one. And um, that way you can read it. And it's a little faster than using underscores, which is kind of what they used to use. Um, so this is, is a standard. You don't have to do it this way, but people will recognize what you're doing when you do do it this way. So um, it's a comfortable convention. And one more thing I want to say about names, you cannot name any of your variables any of these words. These are the magic words of Python. Uh, have we seen any of those words yet? Um, no, we will. Um, there's not a lot of words here. When you think about a language, um, and this is the entire vocabulary of the language except for words you make up, um, that's pretty good. Pretty compact. So you're not allowed to name a variable if, for example, because if Python thinks is, well, we'll see what that means, but it has special meaning. All these have special meaning. 